Before we begin tonight's episode, we wanted to share a few brief messages with you. First, Dark Dice has created a Facebook group with our friends, The Lucky Die, The End of Time and Other Bothers, and Dungeons and Dragons. The Facebook group, titled The Reckless Play Guild, is a community where we talk about the aforementioned shows and, of course, Dungeons and Dragons itself. Consider joining us in the fun at facebook.com slash the reckless play guild. Also, we know the month gap between episodes can be excruciating and wanted to share it with you, a show that we happen to truly enjoy. Succumb to the unknowable horror and black comedy of the Call of Cthulhu Mystery Program, an RPG audio drama that brings Lovecraftian nightmares to life. In the latest series, The Terrible Secret of Lot X, a wealthy occultist's auction proves to be a Pandora's box of the paranormal persuasion. But this is no delightful jaunt into the unknown. She and an unlikely crew of curiosity seekers soon encounter monsters above and below, and an unholy conspiracy that threatens to shed their sanity asunder. Its cinematic audio drama meets actual play, sure to send you to hitherto unknown heights of hilarity and dark depths of dread. Set the dial to the Call of Cthulhu Mystery Program on your favorite podcast player. And now, the time has begun. Do you seek him? You have found yourself among those who roll the dark dice. What you are about to hear happened long ago, a story brought back from the edge of oblivion, beautifully transcribed and enhanced orally to better captivate your attention. Previously, the team set off for Millwater's Hope to find the town's missing children. Instead, they found themselves prey to intellect devourers in the bodies of humans. Having survived the fight, they take a moment to reassess their situation. Will the team's resolve hold up? Will odds roll in their favor? Fear the strangers in your midst. Never play games of fate. Dark Dice. Chapter 3, The Captive The team took a moment to examine their surroundings. All around them, the bodies of the men and revolting creatures that they had just killed, and the unrelenting rain and thunder were the only sounds present. As the adrenaline wore off and their senses slowly returned, the oppressive stench of decay once more hung heavily in the air. So, we've got a body that is currently tied up and gagged by the campfire, and when the mage fell out of the tree, or before he fell out of the tree, something smashed to the ground. Something dropped and smashed? Yeah, from the mage. That's what I just said. I'm going to check that out first. I'll do a sweep for additional crunchy bear traps. Oh yeah, that's a good point, yeah. Please yeah. do. That will require a perception check. Sure thing. A, uh, 17. Over the next few minutes, Soren was able to locate two additional bear traps, which were pinned onto the ground, that had not yet been triggered. In the opening moments of the search, he put a hand on Ayas' shoulder, silently pointing out the trap he was about to trigger. Thank you. Ayas approached the corpse of the individual he believed to be a wizard. At the base of the tree from which he fell, there was a shattered glass container, which was perhaps once a vial. On the man's body, what was left of it? Ayas noted blood-crested leather armor, a crossbow, a short sword, and little else of value. Right, I'm going to investigate whatever that glass thing was. Ayas stabbed the mysterious liquid that it once contained with his pinky and took a quick taste, recognizing the flavor instantly. Right, potion of healing. I sold a few of these back at my shop. Wonder if it's one of mine. While he's doing that, I would like to talk about these brain monsters. The postule monsters. I wonder if I've heard any stories about such monsters before. That would require an intelligence check. Yes, please. And that's a natural 20. <clears throat> Long ago, when I was traveling underground, I learned about these creatures set to burrow into the minds of people after draining them of their intelligence. They effectively created a zombie of a person, with the thing living inside controlling it. These things know everything that the person knew and replaces the person's brain. It knows your languages, your secrets, everything if it can devour your mind. That's what they're called. Uh, Thekigaglaber. 
intellect devourers. Uh, these things typically are only found in the Underdark. There may be an Anthems nearby. Oh, I'm really glad that didn't get in my ear. Me too. There is no coming back from being possessed by these creatures. Your oh. very personality is devoured when they take over. No, I, I don't like that at all. Mm. No, this may have been uh, far more dangerous than I actually gave it credit for. These bandits, that is. Hold on. Are we well, assuming these were bandits? Well, we don't know what they were. I mean, they're, they're gone now. Well, yeah. even before we got to them. What with them being eaten by, you say, intellect devourers? Yes, yeah, so intellect devourers. I've had a run-in with so, these things back in the crack, but never this many. So do you think the whoever's currently bearing and gagged over there by the campfire has actually got one inside waiting or not? I, Let's ask. Oh, my lord. Yes, we forgot about him. Uh, I'm assuming that he is actually... Didn't, uh, didn't the witch say that he was scared? Yes, I assume it was him. Is it not then right to assume that this person is actually intellect-free? Uh, intellect power free <laughs> That would make him an idiot, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, before we go and tying him, let's be assumption-free, all right? So we might actually have a person that knows something that's going on. Let's unbind him, or at least take the... Oh, did it, well, did well let's, let's not unbind him in case he's not okay. Yes, let's try to ungag him first. And then get the potato sack off his head. You've got this cousin, and I'm going to give a shove in the small of the back towards the brown person. <laughs> I would like to assume you move backwards instead of me moving forward from the shove. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I will accept that. <laughs> uh, okay, um, uh, Soren, you seem to be quite knowledgeable about these woods. Can you please? Uh, uh, can you please join me? Absolutely. All right. There's uh, something out there in the forest. I'll stand guard. Some of these things also ran away too, so... I'll check the bodies to see if there's anything on the bodies. Six corpses to pick through. Uh, that's quite a few, quite a few. Let's uh, start with um, you, big guy. I approached the hooded figure and rudely ripped the hood off. The burlap sack was pulled away to reveal a frowning human male with scarred skin. He was very tan with heavy bags under his eyes and short black and grey peppered hair, which was missing in patches. He glared at the team with wide, unfocused eyes, a bloodied piece of yellowing cloth bound taut atop stubble and cracked lips. I would like to, like, grab his face between the, like, the thumb and the four fingers, and I'm, like, kind of pinching his face and moving him side to side, and I'm going to try to see if I see any, like, signs of an intellect of our attack on this person. His eyes are not very focused, but he seems to show fear, maybe a bit of anger as well. Very much unlike the figures we just fought. Hmm. Okay, yeah. I pushed down the mouth gag, yes. <laughs> Thank you. God bless you. <coughs> You're welcome. I'm assuming you were a captive? Yes. Hmm. How long have these things had you captive? Maybe a day, maybe two. That's good, that's good. Do you need water? <clears throat> yes, please. My throat is so dry. I go for my pouch and I feed him some water without unbinding his hands. <laughs> Thank you, stranger. As Father Westpike gave the man water, he noticed a cracked set of reading glasses visible in the man's shirt pocket. All right, I reach for them when I take the water away. Just... and then inspect them in front of him. The man flinched instinctively as Father Westpike suddenly reached forward, but did not produce any vocalization. The glasses appeared to be ordinary, and upon closer examination, everything through their shattered lenses became an unfocused blur. So, where are you from? How did these things catch you? How come you're not one of them? I was traveling with my friends. We're trappers from the east, here to collect furs before winter sets in. We were preparing a hunting site when these things attacked us. I guess there weren't enough of the beasts to eat all of us. I still have my head. Did any of the others survive? I am afraid not. These men, your captors, they were your friends before? Yes. Ah, I'm truly sorry for your loss. Thank you. 
Could I check to see if he's lying about the whole thing? That would require an insight check. Ooh, 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 that's not terrible. Uh, he's not on the level. Rowena and Father Westpike began to speak amongst themselves and Dwarven. You know, I sort of trust him. Maybe because of his condition. His missing teeth and humans are just so darn hard to read. A bit about being kidnapped might be true, but everything else seems bloody sketchy. Ooh, what have we here? Hyas came across a small silver brooch in the shape of a hollowed acorn. He looked at it appraisingly. I might have seen something like this before in my shop. Oh, Seventeen. Oh, wow. I've only ever seen one of these before from a Darklands emissary. Extremely rare. Night ivy. The silver circle houses a small plant inside. There's a pin on the underside that you use to literally pin it to your flesh, which feeds the plant. The plant, in turn, creates armour over the host. It disintegrates immediately if it touches sunlight, but this is a great find. We could probably sell this for, well, you know, um, well over a few hundred gold. Oh, and there's also a shrieking rock, which, thanks to little grooves in it, makes a shrieking sound when you throw it. That's all it does, really. Nothing too special, but worth a few silver, maybe. And what about you? Another mysterious vial. That's peculiar. Mm, little taste, and we'll find out what you do. I'll do it. Mm, it's a defoliating concoction. This stuff really messes up plants. I'll put you with the uh, 40 gold I just found. Just one more corpse. Ayas leaned over to flip the final body. A huge grin crossed the deceased man's face, as talon-like fingers suddenly plunged into Ayas' chest for 14 piercing damage, oh, fucking crippling him and dripping blood everywhere. The blood seemed to transform the man's open face into three hollow sockets. I best take you... You skeet off the rebuke. Fourteen fire damage. Oh, I hope you hate fire, you bastard. Oh, bollocks. The team was able to see the creature flee into the woods gleefully as it patted out the fires from Ias's hellish rebuke. <sighs> Ias's bolt popped the figure in the back, but it hardly seemed to notice as it began to shift in transformation. The growling wolf, Filgia of Zarketh, moved to follow the creature into the darkness. No! By the gods, Filgia! Get back here! Don't split up the party! Remember, stay with your body. We only fought six humans. There were seven corpses. Are you okay? No. It just took 14 hit points off me. There's, there's no fucking way I'm going to let that go. Don't worry, I'll take care of this uh, when right. we get together. Like when the thing is over. Yeah, I can heal you as well. Okay, I got a prayer of healing I could do. Please come closer, everybody. You want to use your prayer magic on me? I want to make the best use of my prayer magic, friend. My leg is in grave need of healing, and if Sister Kevin's fall and I hold a small healing vigil, there will be more than enough light and healing for all of us. Surely you can hardly continue to walk with such wounds. You too, wolf lady. If you prefer, my magic comes from the wilds instead of a bunch of creepy old man gods. <laughs> on a scale of 1 to 10, how hurt are you? Yes, on a scale of 1 to 10, how bad is your pain? On a scale of 1 to 34. <laughs> <laughs> Please. No, well, if you want to take a short rest, we can. We can recuperate a little bit. I could also play some nice, soothing music. As long as it's a short rest, because we still want to chase after these kids as fast as possible. How about we cap it at, say, about an hour? Yeah. Well, rather than having you call on, like, divine aid from gods and the woods or whatever. Still have to deal with our friend here, too. Our prayer of healing would be a ten-minute thing, so it's... We can use it when we're more rushed. All right, so I do have... I have... My shoulder is finally starting to hurt. I got hit too. I'm suddenly famished. I don't normally eat in front of others, but I'll make an exception today. Uh, I have the basket of elderberries and cashews. Great idea, Ayas. I have no reservations about eating in front of others, and now that we finally stopped hitting things, I think part of why I'm so shaky is that I'm hungry. Trail rations. So I only have two remaining. Someone was optimistic about this journey. We have a ranger and a wolf. Assuming that they hunt together... With the buddy system, everything should be fine. And only if we do it within the next uh, ten minutes or so, because I think I only have a few more minutes until I have to return to my normal form. We should probably, though, take care of this person. Right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be nearby. I, I don't want to be close enough to have to deal with it, but close enough mm. to here. I don't trust it. 
And I- I'll be the bad cop then. I'm going to stand next to it with my hammer in hand. I'm like, if you do anything, if I see something squishy come out of your body, <laughs> it's going to get destroyed. <laughs> Otherwise, blessings of Ilmener be with you, friend. So, if we want to get information from this guy, I have a particular set of skills in uh, getting people to talk, involving um, torture. All right, well then get on in here. No! <laughs> Oh, 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 that may be a bit of a jump. I mean, we barely know. Bias <laughs> cracked his knuckles. Oh, the poor man can never play the piano again. So, do we want some answers or not? Uh, no, we are not. Please calm down. This this man is as much as a victim of these circumstances as we are. If he's a victim, he doesn't need to lie to us. I'm pretty sure he's lying, though, yeah. yeah don't get me wrong, he's a lying sack of uh, stuff, but... I don't know, I like the cut of his chip. He does have grit in his eyebrows. Uh, cousin, you're always way too trusting. I mean, you trust Ilmener me, that's a, that's a downfall right now. that the right suffering now, of the few is okay as long as it's for the forgetful of the suffering of the better. So we can torture one guy to save a bunch of kids. Exactly. <laughs> Calm down, Gromsh. This is, this is, we can talk this person down. Okay. Oh, man. <laughs> Who are you calling Gromsh? I, I, I First poking at, at my weight and now this? I look at the prisoner <laughs> and, like, just give a little hat nods towards my teammates, like, Okay, I am apparently the calmest person here, so how about you stop apparently lying and start telling us the truth, or I may not be able to hold my friends back anymore. I, I, I must... told you the truth. What more do you want? I growl at him. I scouted your camp earlier. As they say in the Darklands, a well-placed knife loosens a nice tongue. Ias was then able to roll an intimidation check. Can I assist him? Eighteen. <laughs> I didn't think I'd live to see the day when so-called heroes would stoop so low. What do you want from me? Gents, what did you want to know? What were you actually doing in the woods? Hunting. (sighs) I tried. He's lying through his rotten teeth. I'm gonna bit slap him as hard as I can. (laughs) (laughs) I know how much that hurts. (laughs) Those are friendly taps. Mm. Ah! We will awaken the nameless god from his slumber and be rewarded as he brings about a new era. That is what we are doing here. My god, that was one slap. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab his, his collar and pull him closer. The eight, the god of slumber, why, what are you doing here? Why are you doing this? We seek the lost domain, a prison within a dream, which only allows passage if the proper offer is made. It involves blood. Mm. Whose blood? All right, we, we probably know whose blood. We just need to say, where are the kids? And we need to get going. Where, are the, where do they take the kids? The man stared at Soren, the confused recognition playing across his face. You! They're with you! What is Soren? Do you people know this man? Yes, we're together. Is this like a racist, all humans know each other thing? (laughs) I didn't know. I thought these were interlopers. I apologize. What is he. Where are the rest of your friends? Tell us immediately. Where did you come from? Do you not remember me? I am one that escaped the camps not so long ago visited you in the place of dreams. We were on our way to his domain with the others. Where is the camp? We came from a couple of different ones, my lord. I was... I personally came from the Iraholm, the glacier's bounty. I was with Silly of Strathman, rescued him, rescued by him. And I... I joined the faithful. I've been working with you ever since. We've, we've come because we're finally ready to awaken it. We spoke with you in your dreams beyond the great ocean and traveled here because we had found the entrance to the place where he slumbers. You found it, and as you instructed, we have come with the children, my lord. I'm going to stand behind my cousin and draw my dagger. Don't be rash. I'm not, that's why you're in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like this guy. I growl at him again. I look straight at Soren. My lord? Why does he keep calling you my lord? I 
give everyone a look like I'm really not quite sure and turn back to the guy. Where are they taking them? To the place of archways, the town of the old gate, in the damned elven tongue, Nedja Kadeyera. And this is where the Nameless One will awaken? You, you were the one who told us this. Yes. Who is this man? I, I, I ask the prisoner pointing at Soren. Who is this man? He is Lord Soren Arkwright, the carver of dreams. <laughs> I, Your lord too, it seems. I stare at Soren when he says the last name. I'm interested by what he was scratching at on his back. The man continued to fidget nervously, scratching at his back uncomfortably. Does he have anything else on him if we search him? Lacking pockets, the man did not have anything on his person and it would appear that even his shoes had been taken prior to the team's arrival. He's in the same state as the people whose... the creature broke out of. Yeah. No, we're not getting st distracted with this. I pushed the man over so he's now lying on his back with his hands tied behind his back. And I square myself against Sorin, looking straight at him. Do What's I? What's going on? Okay, I want, I want to look for um, any... Like, he found a doll earlier. Clay. Or at least he said he found a doll earlier. So... I'm going to go and uh, look for anything related to children. On the ground, I'm going to look for, like, hair ribbons or... While searching through the immediate campsite... Oh, God, I rolled a two, so I'm not... It's not... No. Sister Cavern's Fall did not discover anything related to the children in the area. Does anyone have any... Does does the name Lord Soren Arkwright mean anything to me? Now I know his full name. That would require a knowledge history check. Also, the uh, place of arches. Does anyone have any elven history? Yeah, I was kind of about to ask that as well straight after. Like, <laughs> I want to doubles. All right, I'll do, I'll do, I'll do you first because ugh, I don't know what you are. Uh, 18. Rowena felt confident the name Soren Arkwright had not been mentioned in any historical or occult context that she'd ever seen. Excellent. Um, and, what about uh, in religion? <laughs> <laughs> He's a cult. It's a religion. Um. However, she was previously unaware of the cult of the nameless god, or that it was active. Uh, Archers, come on, don't fuck me dice. Oh. Oh. 25. Intikadere translates roughly from Elfin to the old gateway, and the other phrase... Sicari Bolandri roughly translates to the Gate Village, or Place of Arches. She could not place the names to a specific location or legend, but Rowena instinctively knew where she might locate such information in a book back home. Rowena could also recall that the camp the human mentioned as being from, the Gracious Bounty, or Ira Alma, had been an old mithril mine, or quarry. Alright. Well, I've at least heard the names, but I don't really know where they're from. Like those names that just get stuck in your head. I've at least heard of them. And I know a lot of obscure history. That's not in it. Soren, this man seems to trust you. He seems to worship you. Ask him to guide us to the place of the arches, the old archway. I'd be happy to. I will lean back to him and what is your name? I am Cole. Cole. And you say that I am your lord? One of, yes. How many are there? I begin to question that now. Give me my glasses. Why? I wish to see you. Why? I might be making a large mistake. Father, I... bitch slap him again. I hadn't... <laughs> Did you say slap him again? I... I do... I... <laughs> I reach out the glasses to you. Don't do it, no. No, no, I, I'm, I'm giving... Uh, Soren, the glasses. Basically saying, do your own dirty work. Lord. I throw them into the woods, as far as I can. <laughs> what have I done to deserve this? He sneered at the team through cracked yellow teeth. You're lying sack of crap, to be honest. If you're straight with us from the start, I might trust you, but kind of don't. Also, you're, you're worshipping like some dark evil lord. Mm, kind of puts you on the bad side of us. This world is full of pain and suffering, and it needs to be destroyed. Sin is all around us. You see it every day. You surely cannot deny this. No, it's great. What beings could accept this as normal? The sin comes from within, friend. 
So we must be remade. As you've said, we all carry the burden of sin. We have all seen true evil within ourselves. We must quench the flames of sin and drown the world so that we all may be reborn anew, free of evil, free of suffering. We're gonna grab him and lift him to his feet. We're gonna keep holding him with one hand and pull out the dart lantern with the other hand. I'm going to ask him, have you seen anything like this before? Do you know what this is? I can't see much of anything, my lord. If that is you. But you can still feel, all right? Yes. This little, uh, lantern of mine, it has a special ability. Now, it, it doesn't do much when you're in this state, but my friends here would be more than happy to kill you, and then, frankly, this becomes, uh, quite potent. I can bring you back for as long and as often as I like, and it will be excruciating. Soren could now roll an intimidation check. Can I opt to be intimidated by this? <laughs> I'm just genuinely just gonna stand behind my cousin and just like to put my hand like in his and like, it's just a bit too far from me. Witnessing the darkness lurking just behind Soren's calm demeanor, the sanity of Father Westpike, Lady Granite Pike, Filgia the Witch, and Sister Cavern's fall was now called into question. Oh boy. Oh boy. At a 16 plus two. Natural 20. Rowena Granite Pike maintained a safe distance while a cold chill went down the spine of the other three companions, gaining them five stress damage. I... I... What do you want to know? I... I... I I'll tell you what I know, just... Let me experience a natural death, and don't bring me back. How's your sense of direction? Do you need to see to be able to lead us to the place of arches? Yes. Don't die. So you will lead us to the place of Arches? If you desire it, yes. Yes, we need it. Come on. Did they take the children to this place? We never asked. Of course. I ain't like that. And you're going to sacrifice the children to this nameless god? Yes, but you're already too slow. Their blood will be at the final gate and their souls will be lost by now. Well, that just means you're going to have to march a lot faster than you said we're going to do before. And I start, like, mushing the crowd. The group. Oh, God, no, we need to rest. Ah! A quick prayer of healing for some wound closure and then uh, march on. Yeah. Do I get... Do we take this madman on his word and assume that we are already too late? Yeah. I'm I... never going to assume that I am too late until I see the corpses of these children. Yeah. And he Can will I... take us where we need to go. Can I do an insight on that? Like, it's too late, how long we have left thing? Or is he just bullshitting us to be an asshole? 15. Shit. Uh, he believes it, but I'm not sure that I fully believe him. I won't, however, mention that. I'll just keep that in the back of my mind. I mean, if you want to take a bit of a break, it's entirely up to you guys, but... I want to get going, that's my son there. Do all of your healing spells take time to work? Uh, the best most potent one I can ha use right now will take 10 minutes. 10 minutes of concentration. Uh, okay, but most of us look pretty damaged. Could I... Again, I would prefer if we use the the, the prayer of healing. Please, just 10 minutes. Yeah, 10 minutes. Can, can you do it while you walk? Can you concentrate and walk at the same time? N no, uh, it takes full concentration. I cannot take in my surroundings while I do it. Uh, I would turn into a horse, but it feels like it would be a waste. <laughs> <laughs> then... Then we should probably wait, because if we go in there half-cocked with that, uh, with all of us like, bleeding all over the place, we're not going to do anyone any good. We Please. Can take the ten, ten, minutes minutes. Is better, ten minutes is better than an hour of healing, so let's just do the ten okay. minutes and let's get going. I kneel down, holding my hammer, like, hat down in front of me, and I start mumbling prayers. You guys have ten minutes. Everything you know since Pelor, visa the hand of crafty. I am on guard because there is a scary three, now two-eyed thing in the forest. <laughs> I want to try look for the that doll. Soren has it, right? Mm. I'll uh, look for things relating to the children around the campfire. As Filgia turned her back to the team, her white coat began to shift and fade as her body returned to its tiefling form. And he did say he needs his glasses to lead us, right? So should I find them in these ten minutes? Didn't Sindri give them to you? Can 
I perceive where I threw them? <laughs> Did Soren use the lantern? <laughs> I supposed it'd be in poor taste to use the lantern near all these bodies, but, uh... <laughs> oh, there they are. Perfect. I have the glasses. Right. Guys, I see some smaller footsteps over here. They're trailing off to the east a bit. Right. A few notes on the elves, by the way. Um, the biggest faction of high elves is called the Tyrol Empire. They're known to enslave so-called lesser races in the name of the greater good. They claim to do battle against evil deeds and will requisition, kidnap, steal and massacre in the name of combating said evils. They're pretty miffed about the whole Dark Clans incident, which took a portion of their empire and put it in the hands of the Drow and the Undead, if I understand right. And I feel that they probably have a soft spot in their hateful little cold hearts for the Nameless God too. Uh, they've been rowing a lot of late with yeah the Genslow Expanse. Uh, the more I think about it, I'm pretty sure the Gracious Bounty was overmined and abandoned at least 150 years ago? Yeah. Please give us strength to march on. That's a uh, six plus four, so ten plus spell modifier, so fourteen healing for everybody. That's exactly what I needed. Oh, me too. <laughs> Far from what I needed. Thank you, Father. As the ritual concluded, a faint glow surrounded the camp, mending torn flesh, reducing swollen bruises, and easing their pain. Everybody, uh, it can target up to six people. There's only six. I count the people in the party. Uh, seven, including Cole. I'm not healing Cole. <laughs> Fuck that guy. <laughs> All right, <laughs> you seem fully healed, guys. I was afraid you seemed to get hit pretty hard. In the no, I've had worse. And the same with you, Soren. Uh, don't worry about me. What do you know of the man named Silial? I. Silial of Strafa. Silial rescued me from the gracious bounty after I saved his life. The gracious bounty? That's been... Abandoned for years. What were you doing there? I was working there under the generous conditions of our elven captors. It was barbarous cruelty, even by their standards. Celia was an agent of the Silent Clan. Captured during one of the elven slaving raids, he'd gotten too weak to work. I managed to cover for him a few times. He and his allies helped me escape, and I've been Faithful and kind ever since. I've always wondered what lies beyond death, and he had the answer. I respected that. There are so many questions How that... long ago is did you meet Silial? Maybe four years. Much has happened since. It feels like a lifetime ago. N no, Silial is dead. He has to be dead. Impossible. N no, you humans only last maybe a hundred years under good conditions. He has to be dead. Then it clearly hasn't been a hundred years. I spent hundred years in the crack, in the darkness, after I lost Siliano. He can't be alive. I, um, when I left Stratham, he was missing. That wasn't that long ago, because I, I know of him. What? You know that unpleasantness I had with, with, with our uh, Renix? Yes. This is his best friend. He went missing just before I left there. Silja. Uh, yeah. Human. Dark hair. Uh, maybe about... And I tiptoe, pushing my hand up this high. I'm going to put my hand above his because I'm slightly taller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was more like up here. That, it's. He lives in very uh, well in my dad. I was with him until I, the, well, you, we fell behind. We were looking for food, hunting, and we, well, you saw what happened. I'm sorry. You can see him when the world ends. It's not long off. I was not expecting to see him at my end. But I guess maybe a day sooner will not be worse. I've, I wish to see Celia again, but you speak of a madman, not the man I knew. He can't have been in Strathman's hold. He... he died. No. None share his name, and he did not die. Let my freedom serve as proof. His sobriety of mind should also not be called to question. He is one of the most holy men I have met. As holy as any of flesh and blood can be. 
Do not besmirch his name by calling his sanity into question, for he is wise, calm, and collected. Come from a man who speaks of cleansing the world through fire and destruction, I believe him to be as mad as you if you call him sane. I wish for a good world, a pure one, free of sin and death. I am a seeker of he who will bring this to pass. I am a servant of the nameless God, and I shall not rest until the world is made proper. And people say there's no problem with religion. How does uh, <laughs> how does your Lord Soren Arkwright fit into this? And I'm just going to keep an eye on Soren as he answers. He is the one who has set our plan into motion. He is the one who discovered a path to the resting place of the nameless God. How? Ask him. He rarely shared his secrets with us. Well, he seems to know your personality. Well, I ask Soren. I'm as confused as any of you. Do you know anything about slumbering gods or villages with gates? I'm going to be watching him intently. Truly, I don't. But I think it would be wise before we move on that you keep a very close eye on me because my brain, well, it might not be uh, functioning quite correctly. But truly, I don't have any knowledge of who this man is or why he seems to know me. Can I incite that now? <laughs> Do you mind, Peter? <laughs> of course. 17? You said you want someone to keep an eye on you. Do you not trust yourself? Oh, I haven't for many years now. How come? I think this is a conversation we can have on the road. Indeed. Let us tie up the madman in a way that he can still guide us. Which one of us is going to hold the end of his rope? I'm retying this so he can walk. No, way too much responsibility, not me. <laughs> I'm going to suggest that it's uh, someone that's got some um, <clears throat> anchorage behind them. Are you looking at one of us dwarves? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Sister Cameron's fault. I hand the, t- uh, the rope to Sister Cameron's fault. All right. I am a four-foot little dwarf, but yeah, I'll hold it. <laughs> a fine task for a sturdy dwarf. Hmm? You have the power of a god behind you. Do not underestimate yourself. I am also very, wearing very heavy clothing. Chainmail and a shield. <laughs> yep. And you're a kick-ass woman, so, you know, you've got this. All right, let's go. Let's go get some kids. Go. <laughs> the tracks from earlier led from the camp eastward, deeper into the dead pines. Dark Dice, Chapter 3, The Captive. Starring Caitlin Statz as Sister Savarite Caverns Fall. Peter Lewis as Soren Arkwright, Ethor Vithyarsson as Sindri Westpike, David Alt as Ayas Hinskeep, Kessy Rilinicki as Flugia the Witch, Hem Cleveland as Lady Rowena Granite Pike, and Travis Fengroff as Dungeon Master, featuring guest voice Eric Nelson as Cole, and transcriptions by Hem Cleveland. This episode was co edited by Pacific S. Obadiah and Travis Fengroff, produced, edited, and with sound design by Travis Fengroff, and mixed and mastered by Sarah Baczynski. Episode 3 features music by Travis Fengroff and Enzo Pizzovio. All music was mixed and mastered by Brandon Strader. If you're looking for more horror podcasts lurking just beneath the darkness, look no further than the Call of Cthulhu Mystery Program. If you're also looking for a new podcast app, we highly recommend Himalaya. Also, feel free to join our Facebook group, facebook.com slash the Reckless Play Guild. This is a Fool and Scholar production. Thank you for listening.